Missed Opportunities is the map where we have to clear out Terezine geysers for Stetman's bots to harvest. Then we have to protect said bots from enemies. If we lose more than one bot on brutal difficulty, we lose the game. Enemies sometimes transform when they deal damage, and they spawn doodlings upon death. Hybrids detonate nukes after death. Abathur, where do we have him? So, Abathur, uh, he has a lot of tools. He has a lot of good tools, like the Viper and Ravagers, although it can be challenging to use both of them. Uh, he, his Brutalisks and, Lev Brutalisks and Leviathans can take a hit. That's, of course, if you can even get to that point. For some people, they don't know how to... They know how to farm, but not when there's alien incubation, and that causes a lot of trouble if you don't know how to do it. And uh, if you don't farm, then you're not going to have anything that does good AoE until, like, much, much later. So, yeah, once you get a Brutalist, you're going to be in good shape for quite a while. And uh, that will give you enough time to... Survive. If there's an early hybrid, you just kind of like use Toxic Nest or like your symbiotes. You can attack and you can attack while walking away from the hybrid. So yeah, I put Abathur in B. Okay, how about you, Zero? I have him in A tier. I don't think his early game is as bad as Tutu is making it sound. Even if you don't lure the first wave plus the ball, the waves that come for the first ball to should give you enough for a Brutalisk and. Yeah, bo both of the the bot waves and the first wave should just be handled by like a roach kiting things into a toxic dust. So, and after that, he just makes ravagers, which kill enemies very fast from a long range. And yeah, brutalists to protect them from the brutlings. So I have him in A tier. What do you think, Tutu? I don't think it's well. If you know how to play Abathur, then yeah. If you, I guess, if you're used to like P one or something. It's harder than usual. So, like, if you don't know what you're doing, the your roach can get surrounded and die, or you're like burning all your men's just to keep the first one alive because you messed up somehow. And if the first wave is zerglings, it's a there are a lot of broodlings when uh, the first wave is zerglings. So, yeah, when you're fighting zerg, there are lots of broodlings there. So it's a lot harder there are a lot. unless you're like used to it. Okay, that's uh, that's Tutu's rationale for why Abathur is not A. What do you think, Zero? I mean, it, it, I really don't think it's that hard. Like, even for someone that rarely plays Abathur, I don't really see how you fail at this. You'd be surprised. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> oh no. So that's only against like the link comps. You still have two other races on the road ship for Zerg. And even against Lynx, I really don't see it being that difficult. <laughs> the problem, I don't think the problem is the Zerglings themselves. The problem is when they, when you use the Toxic Nest on the Zerglings, they spawn Doodling. So you need to have backup. It's not even regular luring. You need to lure into the Toxic and then have backup Toxic Nests for the Doodling. So you need to have Autocast switched off and detonate them in layers. So it's probably better to have multiple test control groups just for the toxic nests. And that's probably not something we can expect from even slightly above average Abathur players. I have a lot of toxic nests though. Remember, you don't have to lure. You can just use pretty much all your nests on the wave and then start building them for the bot. If you just build them like in a line and then have a roach at the back, like, that, that should be enough to just kill the whole wave without you even having to detonate it yourself <laughs> yeah it's it's like it's like easier getting said the first than done. it's good but then like even after that it's not like easy mode for him yeah that's why he's a tier not s that's, no, that's why he's not a. A. yeah uh, i don't know i still a. think he's a a a to me is like they're strong, but you need to work for it. And Abathur is like, yeah, although he has to work even more for it, because you have to know a lot about the commander and how to like deal with the broodlings. So, so 
okay he how, how does abathur deal with the doodlings in the later game zero uh, brutal is nothing yeah, brutalists. What if they die from different angles and like some some doodlings end up in your allies' base, some of them end up on they, the bot, some of them end up. They, they they actually generally go towards close toxic nests rather than your base, because toxic nests are structures, so they'll go towards like stray ones. And in the late game, you have lots of minerals, so the late game is actually not a problem. You just dump like spine crawlers in your main. It's the early game. The, the yeah. thing is that, um, so what do you do when a hybrid is in your face? And the brutalist face? Brutalist face, I mean, you, you can kite it though. They have a pretty solid range of the symbiotes. If there are like three hybrids fighting two, three brutalists, that's a common situation at the 1530 wave, right? I guess what like, Tutu huh? is saying here is that A is for people who not only have ways to to start with a start with a solid setup but also ways to deal with when things go wrong and a bunch of hybrid just end up in your base is that what you're saying tutu even not even like in the base it's just when you're like to, okay so to deal with like multiple hybrid at once you pull the brutalist in one direction while your ravagers fight from a different direction so that because otherwise, if, if you're going the same direction, the, brute, the, the hybrids will die near your Ravagers, which is bad, right? You're, so if you can't control that properly, you're not going to... You're, your Brutalists are going to be really hurt and might even die. So That's true. It's not that I easy. I see what you're saying here, yeah. I think his power is like A tier, but he's difficult to use just because of how he's designed. Does that sound like an A star to you, or does it sound like a B? I, I guess A star. I mean, in terms, if you're talking about raw power, he can be like S because he's really good, but you gotta know how to use him. Sounds like an A star to me. If, yeah, if, right? If, yeah. if the raw power is really good, but it's you know, advanced, like, very advanced to use, then it sounds like an a asterisk. Like, uh, it probably goes down a tier for less experienced players. We do that, we do that before, right? Kind of. I mean, with that kind of A-star rating, that can be true for so many commanders. That's, but, okay. that's, the, that's a caveat. It, it can be true for a lot of commanders, so uh, we have to be careful when saying A-star because it, it, it might just spiral out of control if we just star everyone and put them in a higher tier so like i think it's just you give an average rating and then like if you think you're better then you bump it up if you think you're worse then you bump it down yourself what do you think you, zero you, you do it based on your own skill level your own assessment of your own skill i'll be fine with the a star he, he, he can pretty much deal with Anything this mutation throws at him against any composition with Ravager and Brutalisks. That is true. Yeah, he's just difficult to use. There's there's a dude who did this against all 19 comps. Good for him. Or her. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be that kind of... It's not worth that anymore, to be honest. But anyway. Uh, okay, so here we are. Uh, our situation is he is strong enough to defeat anything. But I guess our contention point is whether it is uh, the skill required is too high for average players, average players who know what to do, but it's actually legitimately tricky to control properly and not just a matter of knowing what to do. Because if it, if it is legitimately tricky to control, even if played perfectly, he is powerful, then that might be actually a B. But if it's just, you know, knowing what to do, and the strategy, if you know what to do, becomes semi-straightforward at least, then that sounds like an A star for me. But I don't know. <laughs> right. What do you guys think? I think it's just holding down C on hovering over enemies while building Ravagers. <laughs> but I don't know if it's not too difficult.
Okay, it's how about the, the kiting hybrid part? That's kind of tricky in the mid late game. That's true. Kiting hybrid is pretty tricky, especially when your Brutalix is a melee unit. It, 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 and even the symbiote is not a nuke dodging range. Like, it has like something like three range. That's oh, not enough to don't, dodge a nuke. Don't forget that if you're fighting a unit that's not a hybrid and it transmutates to a hybrid that's while you're. That's more nukes. Yes, that's more nukes, but you're it, you're like already there, and you're trying to run away, but symbiotes auto attack. So mm. if you're like if, if you don't pay attention for like just a little bit, it might just explode. That's also true. Although something else you can do, uh, not sure if you personally would have the bandwidth to do it, is the vipers disabling clouds will make it less likely for things to transform in the first place, because things would be able to attack. That's just making it even harder to use. I don't think I'm it's necessary just, I'm just here. Saying, I'm just saying, like, yeah. it, it will. If you're really good, you can use both the Ravagers and Vipers. I made two Vipers. They died, and I just like I'm not making these anymore. Yeah, in a regular brutal, in a regular brutal setting, it's it's actually pretty fun to use Ravagers and Vipers at the same time. It's uh, it's fun, but in an mutation, in a mutation like this, there is like little to no margin for error, and sometimes you even have to account for. Just things that don't go expected, like, like doodlings ending up in your base for some reason, or your ally suddenly feeding without realizing it, and then you have to clean up after him. But anyway, uh, how about how about this? We put him in B for now, and then we'll decide later if he is A star, based on where the other commanders fall. Is that okay? Uh, I'm fine with it. Alright, let's put him in B for now. Uh, let's move on.